So, you're just as excited as we are for Monster Hunter Wilds? <laughs> yes. So these are our top 10 or top 16 monsters that we want to see returning to the wilds. Well, that we want to hunt again. <laughs> or that maybe we would love to hunt or fashion hunt. Oh, hunt for the first time for me since I haven't played many Monster Hunters yet. All right. We're starting with one of my favorite monsters that I've been really wishing mm. for to Looking return. Forward. And as you know, I really really like my Leviathans. So this is Naturala. Well, he's not actually a snake, but he has like tiny arms. He mostly behaves like a snake. He curls around. He has one of the coolest armors and he is a sound monster. A sound monster? I so, have never fought a sound monster, I believe. You have fought a sound monster. What would that be? Shara Iswalda. Shara Iswalda is a sound monster? I, I would say, or wind pressure. Wind pressure, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, but uh, so... I see how the, 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 the color scheme and the style probably would, would be something you're interested in. Does, does he have a very colorful armor? Yes. Colors, etc. I mean, it, it, you, you see why mm -hmm. the connection. He also has a beak, so he's kind of a bird guy, but he's a leviathan. So. He's a bird or a leviathan snake. Interesting, yeah. I would like you to introduce us to the next one. Oh, Chichiyaku! I want to be flashed by him again. I, I just love him. He's so cute. I love the Hokoro Highlands in general. Oh, and okay. I mean, I love the color schemes of uh, Namiele and Chichiyaku. Like, I just love them as a style, but I, f I find like Tsitsiyaku could be a small monster again, just a returning one. I, I, I love his flash and he's so fabulous. <laughs> Absolutely. I think he's fun. He's, he's definitely one of the more in interesting beginning bird vibrants, let's say. The next one, one you've known from Monster Hunter stories at the very least, also a Leviathan, is Agnactor. He's the magma fire beam guy, kind of a fiery... Uh, is he not on the, on the water? No, no, he's he, he can dive through stone and okay. he has three separate like phases. He, he starts out with his back and everything molten, uh, molten magma, and then you can hit it like easily, but then it kind of gets hard and then you, your weapons will deflect. So, but then you can you can break the magma and have it always go through. But when he digs in or uses his magma beam, he also heats up so the magma also melts again and he gets vulnerable. So when, when he uses his fire attacks, he also gets more vulnerable to your attacks. So he is interesting, especially because of his different phases in that case. Huh? Yes, he has different phases and he's just, he's a, he deserves to return. He also has a, a glacial variant where his oh, attributes okay. are flipped. So that would, could kind of make sense for with the entire Monster Hunter Wilds theme of Nature the shifting theme. Yeah. environments, like a frozen volcano or something, that would be really cool with him returning okay, in, in yeah, such sure. an environment. You, you do love your Leviathan, yes, huh? I, I am, I'm seeing a theme here. He also has a beak. <laughs> you pick this one. Yes, I have but his, What's his name? Samitros. <laughs> I've seen the smaller ones in rice, waddling mm, in the waters. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I believe I have fought in stories. And he looks like a very fun, very weird monster. He's also a shark. And like, like this ice shark. I, I believe like the blowing up part reminds me of uh, Tetranodon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he definitely yeah, I really has. like Tetranodon, but he's in, in, in Monster Hunter Rise already, so we don't have to I mean, like, we, we recycle probably that. actually, now that you mentioned it, we got Tetranodon instead of Samitros, so yeah, maybe it's time for him to return. I, I, he, he looks funky, so <laughs> I, I like my fat boys. <laughs> He's so cute though! I, I also think he's cool. He also has like three different phases to his fight. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, like he has his normal phase, then he has the one where he puts eyes on his back and becomes more aggressive. Mm -hmm. And then he can also, like, as you said, like the, the phase where he blows up. And you do a lot of damage to him, but he can also just roll over you. And, and at, at the I point where you find... I find that a very funny mechanic, just getting <laughs> rolled over by monsters. <laughs> at the point where you do fight him, this basically two shots you. So wow, okay. That's, that's yeah. pretty neat. The next one, it is time for Ketsu to Take make space for a more interesting missing link Vyvern, I guess. It's of course Kiki Nox. Kiki Nox, yeah. I've, um, I've heard about him. I mean, I've talked about him a lot. I think he's just way more interesting than Ketsu. Uh, so you want to fight a whole bunch of uh, small little babies? Oh yeah, they're great. <laughs> like, the, the, he just does all the things. He's all he's reasonably adaptable. He lives in the... the yeah, well, you, you meet him in the, the frost environment first. And, like, he has these weird eggs in I mean uh, like a map just made out of caves would probably be could be interesting could be very interesting and then just a bunch of Kiki Nox because like technically you could maybe introduce uh, intermittent stage between the, the Gigi and the Kiki Nox where mm. if you like 
where the cave just kind of starts to fill up with the Ginox over time if you don't go and, and eradicate some of them. Okay, I mean, sure. <laughs> I, I see you're not convinced. <laughs> I don't know. I have fought Ketsu and I don't mind him, but also don't love him. So I have no clue how he would be. Well, he does poison instead of para, which is a lot more dealable, I think. Mm. You can just either ignore it or drink a consumable and be done. So his combos are a lot less deadly. Yeah, no, I mean, he's, he's I love him. Okay. Dorambos? Is it? Gamoth. Gamoth. So you I chose Gamoth because of... I, I don't know, I feel like we have a little mammal-like monsters and I kind of mm, appreciate mm, the fact yeah. that he is a mammal-like monster. It not, yes. uh, not, does not always have to be a dragon-like or a, 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 a bird and snakes. and snakes and stuff. It can also once be a, a mammal-like monster and I appreciate the fact that he's a mammal-like monster and I have never fought him yet. No, but he I game, so. think he can have a return since he has not been around a lot and his brethren have been like yeah. the, the other three of the fated and stuff. four the other three of the fated four has been have been uh, recycled a lot at least right? in one game uh i think astalos only had one return just now in rise especially not just in rise especially in sunbreak so uh, misotsune is the special child uh, in Glavinus, that case actually Glavinus, okay well yeah Glavinus was featured quite well in world, uh, the world and but he isn't in, in rise he isn't right he isn't yeah. in rise yeah. so uh, technically just based on, on statistics we should have come off coming up and he's another he's, ice monster we are finally i mean he can or a gamma of like creature could also be in another area but since he's like based on a mammoth i yes, guess he has Probably that's the ice you part of it. You did fight them in stories. Too, yes, though. I know. That's why I know. Uh, no, th th because of stories, I know certain monsters more. Yes. But I have not fought them really, like just like this Pokemon style ish fighting. I mean, I guess. But like, you learn a lot about the monster, I think, even in stories. I, f I found stories to be very nicely done. Hmm? Now, mm -hmm. for my next pick, it, it has to be Ketchup Watcha. Yeah. You know it. I, I talk about him enough, huh? No, uh, but he also was in stories. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> and I've heard about him. Yep, yeah. okay. So for, for him, the, the main gimmick is, first of all, he's just a prankster. Like, he's he's uh, a bit like Bishaten, but instead of like sitting on his tail all the time, he, he is, lives in tiny areas where he climbs around and he can kind of cover his eyes or his entire face with, this, with his ears to appear like a scary, maybe feline predator or something. So he's also very adaptable and he has really, really long claws. I think there's a, an actual animal. And yeah, he would also fit in, be fitting in the mammal-esque designs. Yeah. What you just talked about. <laughs> So I think like monkeys have been used a bit more than fair um, enough than other o than others. Animals. Fair enough. That's that's. I true. mean, it, there comes a very uh, known monkey to mind. Yeah, Rajang. Rajang. Uh, cold. I mean, the, the the one that you mentioned before is also a monkey themed, right? Oh, Bishoten. Yeah, yeah, Bishoten. I guess he he is kind of a bit of overlap with Bishoten. Yeah, I guess. He's he's uh, obviously colorful and funky. Yeah. Right. This one? I have not thought that monster. I, I think I just have a wish list of monsters I've heard of and sounded cool by now. So Zeltas and Zeltas Queen, I find an interesting duo because of their insect themed. Though we had like the spiders in yes, Arise. Yes, we do have spiders, but not insects. But not really, like insects. And I find the, in the interesting part that the combination that they do and I probably the, the fight gets also interesting also, for, for... It uh, would also really fit the theme in wilds because like imagine there's like one Celtas queen and then it just gets swarmed by 20 something Celtas while you're fighting her oh, and right, uh, yes, she with also this, with this uh, group mechanic they yeah seem exactly to be like they, they would be working really really well in that could, also the Celtas fit, queen yes. is, a, is a desert monster or can appear in the deserts and in the jungles mm. so she's really adaptable or she's shown to be adaptable to different environments but was also yeah. fit with the theming I, I believe she could be a very interesting monster to return when the or something along the lines of this thing. And they, they pull insect. a yeah, they, they pull a super interesting prank on you where the Celtas in the game was the, one of the first monsters that you fight and he's super weak. Mm -hmm. And then later you find the Celtas again and then just his queen shows up and you're like, oh, <laughs> oh no. Fair. Like the beehive queens and yes. stuff like that are way bigger than the males. Exactly. That's okay. kind of what's going on. The next one that, that I put on the list is Kurepeko. He's, he's just a fun guy. He's a parrot. Obviously, and he can call other monsters. 
monsters to his help, sometimes to his own detriment, because he was introduced in the same game as Devil Cho, so it, it of course became kind of funny when Kurepekos would call for aid and then a Devil Cho just shows up and yeets him away with a rock. <laughs> okay, at, at least he doesn't get eaten and then yanked against yeah. the wall. Well, I mean, that is that is a new mechanic in the world, so maybe they would, like, he, he would be a prime prime target for a Devil Cho to just, like, at least try to take a bite out of. Oh, right! That's, is it in, in worlds where, like, they, uh, the Devil Cho eats a smaller monster and just yet, yes. yet he, he against the bigger one? Yes, he keeps it in his mouth and then he runs around with it, yeah. <laughs> That would be funny, yes. But I see Kurepeko, but probably he's a bit too unrealistic for this game. I have no. I mean, they they, they can they can absolutely. I mean, do it. Elder they Dragons have, exist, though. So there's a great ecology video of the Kurepeko where he shows like how he could live in a natural habitat, and it's super cute. So they could absolutely pull it off. I mean, most of these monsters are kind of grounded in in some form of reality, so I don't see why they wouldn't work in a setting. Reminds like me of cats that do the. To, to call on birds. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of that's kind of his whole ordeal. Anjanaf, I, he I just put him on the list because he's my bestest boy. I mean, who doesn't want to fight a tick? Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex that spits fire. Yeah, and exactly. he's my bestest boy. I mean, he he's basically the noob slayer of Monster Hunter World. I kind of like his variant too. Like, it's the Fulgur Anjanaf. Fulgur Anjanaf. I, I kind of like Fulgur Anjanaf too. So. Yeah. I, I just enjoy his fight, especially when, uh, when I was dual blading. He's like just. He's just good to hunt. He's just good it's to hunt. He's not, not, he doesn't have annoying moves and feels great to hunt. He has an interesting range mode transition, and also like his his features kind of lend themselves to to this feeling of ecolo uh, ecologic evolution into a into the pickle. Oh, pickle! Yeah. Like his teeth are also yes. already starting like this kind of overgrowth and he has the, the back that is kind of expanding and with Devil Cho, when he rages like his back also expands but it's yes. all grown together and also okay. his, his teeth have a lot of overgrowth so like if you just look at the two monsters they have I would say some ecologic similarities They're so both maybe uh, they have a common ancestor yeah the, the, uh, big dinosaur style monsters I mean I like dinosaurs why not put it in my game they, they're elemental attack are also very much tied to breath attacks. Yeah, I would like to hunt him Thank again. You. So now for the elder dragons, I am starting mm -hmm. off with Gugmasius. He's the tar elder dragon. His entire stick is that he's kind of attracted to gunpowder, so he raids human forts settlements. and settlements, and especially like military forts. He just like mouse them down because he's of course an elder dragon, so he's powerful enough. And yes, canonically, he does have a dragon piercer, On a dragonator stuck to his back, kind of lodged itself in there during one of his fortress raids. And I think there's a lot of history with that dragon. So that, that's super cool. Where and is my dragonator on the god Matthews? Exactly. <laughs> and now that I look at it, actually, he really reminds me of Shara as well. Just like the covered. wings. Yeah, the wings. Uh, he looks like a monster I would like the armor from. Uh, and of course, he has a super. I have actually no idea what the armor looks like. I, I still have a. I, I don't think I ever met it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he's a. Uh, Tough, He's tough, tough. Boy. It's also well. I will, I will partially blame the fact that you need four-player multiplayer. Oh. Uh, he was the the G rank boss in Monster Hunter 4, so of course, if you don't have any friends, then it becomes more difficult to, to do enough damage before he just utterly destroys you. And he has a very cool laser cannon that he can fire at you. Firing so, my laser! <clears throat> okay. Technically, in the game, he was a siege monster that you fought in a huge fort, obviously, oh, okay. but I think he deserves to be redone the same way World redid Alathreon and Fatalis, maybe. Uh, so he so could be like, like a really interesting open in, field in, in fight, a something. special arena and stuff. Maybe, yeah. But okay, fair enough. He looks interesting. I'd be open to fight him. Valhazak! I love him! He's great. Put more horror in my Monster Hunter. I love it. Just the, <laughs> the entire decaying thing I around mean, him. Rotten Vale and mm -hmm. the whole like grittiness or the, the rottiness of Rotten Vale. I love it. It's a very interesting feel and area. It doesn't 
it's not ice and fire and deserts and like the whole always the same mm, and the same I, areas, I, I yeah. really enjoy the fact that the rotten veil is very special yeah. and he really really fits into the rotten veil yep don't don't put him out of the rotten veil i mean we had the uh, black veil ha- 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 exactly. i find him okay too i really like the design of both valhasak it's a lot less interesting but i find like valhasak should be at the place where the things are dying and yeah. he just fits that theme give me the scary elder dragon back one feature I always found interesting is how he kind of has this deep sea vibe to him. Yeah, the, the double mouth is a, yeah, the moray, a, a, a moray thing, mouth. right? But also like his glowing, these large yellow eyes that I think are actually fake. I think it's like tiny eyes in front, something, something. I have no clue. I, I've never seen an ecology video about him. I've heard about the fluvium thing, how that could technically work. And I actually, yes, I know it's very difficult first hunt and so, but I find it an interesting mechanic. Mechanic, yeah. Like a, they, something different. Yeah. You, you really need to just learn to use your null berries. Exactly. And he's not hard, like he, he's not too hard. So he, he's doable even with his mechanics if you learn how to use your null berries and stuff and really like don't engage him when he's yeah, when surrounding he's, himself with the exactly. fluvium and engage him when he's not. But we do like yeah. our lasers with large lasers. And on the topic of uh, Valhasag and the Rotten Veil, vale, I think if we bring back some decay monster matter with Valhasak, we need to bring back Nakarkas because he's the other decaying matter dragon and as at least in his base game he, he gets introduced as like this kind of Hydra turtle-esque character but you're not, not really sure what you're actually fighting and then you mm-hmm. beat it and then it kind of just disappears like you can see it's in a pit of bones right mm-hmm, and it mm-hmm. disappears it definitely looks like it also could be at home at a something like a rotten whale and then when he returns later, like you find out he didn't really slay it, or like he returns and reveals that he is actually a kraken, and these these or his heads are just tentacles that he outfits with the bones of other dead vibrants and assimilates their abilities. So you can get him with the, the fists of a brachidios, for example, and then he can oh. apply he can apply slime to you, and can get lucky eye cross bones, and then he can use thunder ailment, and he can shoot huge laser beams out of his actual kraken mouth. I, I've- I, I kind of like the fact that like, Krakens I have not seen yeah. in a while in and that case yeah. in Monster Hunter and I, I would be open to a Kraken-like monster. So he would definitely have like the craziest turf force with Volhazak. Fair enough. I mean, he, you can really imagine him in the Rotten Vale just claiming all the dead bones and, and growing stronger with all the So Valhazak can have the rotting flesh and he can have the, <laughs> the bones. The leftover bones, yeah, exactly, to, to build his own shell out of it. But I, I mean, that, that would be just really, really interesting to have these two in the same game. So I'm, and I think it's just a very interesting, as you said, the Kraken is in generally yes. interesting design that we don't really see a lot. Yeah, I mean, one can dream. So this is our list for the last one. I have a very special one that you probably didn't think of and I just think we need it in a mainline game. Oh, that's the the, the creature from Stories. A moth. Yes, it's like the moth, like, I don't know, the the moth dragon. Altora, the Uh, moth dragon. He's the final boss in Monster Hunter Stories 2. Oh, it would be interesting to like really hunt. I know both of us when we came to that part were like, like, give me a hunt. (laughs) Can we hunt him in a mainline game and yes. he's, he's super set up for this kind of dlc boss he wouldn't be in the in the base game but i can see him in the mainline because he also like he has this fear that he charges right and yep. then overturns it gets like, strong, like and it's like or something exactly yeah. it could be something like the sabichiva and he also has of course his different phases where he always gets more and more wings to up to his six in total but i i really like dig him yeah sure and i i like moths like that's my favorite Pokemon, I believe. believe. Yeah. So I, I'll dig a moth flavored dragon. Dra- dragon, absolutely. A super powerful moth dragon. So yeah, I guess that's, as you said, our opinion or our... That would be the monsters we would really love to see in the mainline Monster Hunter. Return in a main, mainline Monster Hunter. Return and sometimes even first time. First time seeing them in the Monster Hunter, yeah. Sure, yeah. All right. Thank you for listening. <laughs>